Hello everyone and welcome back to Cointempo. Today we're going to talk about what a quantum computer attack is, what cryptocurrencies have quantum attack resistance built in, and how they do it. We're going to take a look at QRL, Hcash, NEO, and IOTA, and how they do what they do. So, first off, I want to give a shout out to Knight Irukanji for requesting the topic of quantum computing hacks. This is not really an easy topic to explain, and I know that uh, there are other YouTubers out there talking on this topic, but I just wanted mine to go a little more than surface level, but not too far. I'm still learning a lot about this, but I want to talk about what these type of hacks are and what cryptocurrencies out there have built-in protection. I want this video to be a starting point for people interested in diving into the larger intricacies of what quantum resistance means, and I want them to do their own research. This video should not be considered financial advice. So for some of you, the big question is, what is a quantum computer? This is a quantum computer. This particular unit is the D-Wave, D -wave. owned by Google. The central processor is enclosed in a 0 .02 Kelvin chamber. That's negative 459 Fahrenheit or negative 273.13 degrees Celsius. That's pretty cold, but that's what it takes to work this thing. IBM has a commercialized version called the IBM Q. These are very complex machines right now, and you might not see one at your local Best Buy for at least another 15 years. There's a great article on explainthatstuff.com that explains, quantum computing is the storing and processing of information using individual atoms, ions, electrons, or protons. This opens up the possibilities of crunching computations millions of times faster than the commercial computers available today. And in a very much different way, when researching quantum resistant cryptocurrencies, I kept seeing this acronym, ECDSA. This is an important thing to know about when understanding what a quantum attack is. Bitcoin Wiki defines ECDSA as Elliptic Curve Digital Signature Algorithm, or ECDSA, a cryptographic algorithm used by Bitcoin to ensure that funds can only be spent by their rightful owners. A few concepts related to ECDSA, which are pretty commonly known, are the private key, a secret number known only to the person that generated it. A private key is essentially a randomly generated number. In Bitcoin, someone with a private key that corresponds to the funds on the public ledger can spend the funds. Next, the public key. A number that corresponds to a private key but does not need to be kept secret. A public key can be calculated from a private key but not vice versa. A public key can be used to determine if a signature is genuine, in other words, produced with the proper key, without requiring the private key to be divulged. Now, there is a very specific part here you might want to pay attention to. A public key can be calculated from a private key but not vice versa. Actually, this is the key idea behind what a quantum attack is. It is calculating the private key based off of the public key. As we go along here to further explain this, I want to say that I'm going to be leaving some parts out of the documents I'll be reading. Believe me, this is going somewhere. <laughs> Just a refresher, the ECDSA is the signature type, public key, private key. On the QRL.org, the significance of ECDSA is further explained. Elliptic Curve Digital Signature Algorithm is a digital signature algorithm standard that is using elliptic curve cryptography to generate and verify digital signatures. ECDSA is used in cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin to secure financial transactions. In order to generate a valid Bitcoin transaction, the private key is needed to sign the transaction and generate the ECDSA digital signature. The corresponding public key is published after the transaction is generated because it is needed to verify that the transaction was signed correctly using the private key. The security of ECDSA relies on the assumption that it is hard to compute the private key when the public key is given. Hard to compute, but not impossible. The security of ECDSA is broken when the private key can be computed from the public key. Now I know it may seem like I'm reiterating here, but I just want to drill this point in. This is what the attack is about. 
Now what does this attack mean and why does it affect me? Well, I think the best explanation of how this quantum attack affects us is well defined in the QRL Quantum Resistant Ledger Cryptocurrency Project white papers. Let's take a look. I'm going to go through some of the highlights of the section that explains. They discuss the security of different types of digital signature encryptions and what the attack does as well. RSA, DSA, and ECDSA remain secure based on the computational difficulty of factorization of large integers, the discrete logarithm problem, and the elliptic curve discrete logarithm problem. It's based on the difficulty of it, but not the impossibility. A quantum computer could theoretically reconstruct the private key given ECDSA public keys. It is thought that ECDSA is more vulnerable to quantum attacks than RSA due to use of smaller key sizes. It is unclear how advanced quantum computing may be presently, or that any breakthrough in this field will be published to allow cryptographic protocols in common usage to the internet to be made post-quantum secure. With somewhat anti-establishment origins, Bitcoin could find itself the earliest target of an adversary with a quantum computer. So now we go on to the theoretical attack on Bitcoin. If a significant quantum computing advance were to occur publicly, node developers could implement quantum-resistant cryptographic signature schemes into Bitcoin and encourage all users to move their balances from ECDSA-based addresses to new quantum-safe addresses to mitigate the proportion of affected addresses it would be reasonable to disable public key recycling at the protocol level. Such an event would also result in the possible movement of 1 million coins belonging to Satoshi Nakamoto, the founder of Bitcoin or the creator, with associated price volatility. Keep in mind people, this is very theoretical. A less favorable scenario would be a silent nonlinear quantum computing advance. <laughs> Man, that was a mouthful. I know they're not making this easy. Followed by a nuanced quantum computing attack on Bitcoin addresses with exposed public keys. Such thefts could have a devastating effect upon the Bitcoin exchange price due to new heavy sell pressure and a complete loss of confidence in the system as the scale of thefts become known. The role of Bitcoin as a store of value, digital gold, would be very badly damaged with extreme consequences for the world. In this context, the authors believe it is reasonable to experiment with quantum-resistant cryptographic signatures in a cryptographic ledger and potentially create a backup value store in the event of a black swan. So basically they're talking about just the possible hack on Bitcoin, what it could do, how it could reduce confidence in cryptocurrencies altogether if Bitcoin is remaining to be the dominant cryptocurrency and um, it just wouldn't bode well for cryptocurrency as a whole because a lot of cryptocurrencies would be susceptible to this sort of attack if they're not trying to implement quantum resistance now. And the quantum resistant ledger cryptocurrency project definitely is looking ahead to the future to try to resist these attacks before they happen. I think it's important that there's research being done in this area. Let's go on to the next part of this, which I'll keep brief. This is something that you might want to pay attention to because it discusses the types of signatures that there are. There are several important cryptographic systems which are believed to be quantum resistant. Hash-based cryptography, code-based cryptography, lattice-based cryptography, multivariant quadratic equation cryptography, and secret key cryptography. All these schemes are thought to resist both classical and quantum computing attack given sufficiently long key sizes. Now, I just want to make this brief. QRL is using the hash-based digital signatures. Please do your own research to find out more about what that means. Some of this stuff goes very deep mathematically, but I think it's important that we at least have this general vocabulary so that we can be informed when people speak on these topics. Let's move on from QRL and start talking about HCash, a different cryptocurrency, and how they address these type of attacks. Let me go through some of the highlights from their white paper that say, Post-quantum cryptography, also known as quantum-resistant cryptography, 
is able to resist the attack of quantum computers. The development of such encryption technology takes a more traditional path based on difficult problems in specific mathematic fields. Through researching and developing algorithms, the post-quantum secure encryption technology can be applied to the network and to provide the highest level of data security. The application of post-quantum cryptography does not rely on quantum theory phenomenon, but its computational security can defend against any form of quantum attacks currently known. This part was interesting. In 1997, IBM researchers proposed an encryption scheme called Learning with Errors, LWE, which means to learn with error. As it takes a long time to find the nearest lattice, it can resist attacks from a quantum computer. So where does learning with error come into place here? It seems as though HCash is using the Ring LWE based public key encryption scheme. So what does this mean? Later in their document they say that HCash will develop a Ring LWE key exchange protocol that works with OpenSSL to achieve post-quantum security on the blockchain. So they're using a, a th things based on research in 1997 to secure their signatures. <laughs> That's awesome. I hope it works. I'm just glad they're thinking about it. As we're going towards the last part of this video, I hope you all are at least gathering some vocabulary so that you are familiar with the words being used, uh, the terminologies being used, and, and the ideas being used, so that when people speak about quantum resistance, you have a little bit of idea of what's going on. Knowledge and film Knowledge and familiarity in the crypto space is absolutely power. So kudos to you if you've listened to me this long. <laughs> Let's turn the page to NEO. NEO's white paper explains a bit about their resistance precaution by saying that NEO QS, or Quantum Safe, is a lattice-based cryptographic mechanism used in their encryption. This was actually one of the usable methods discussed earlier in QRL's white paper. I encourage you all to read more about this lattice-based concept. And lastly, I want to mention IOTA. Section 5 in its white paper discusses how it could potentially defend against a quantum computing attack to the tangle. I encourage you all to read through it and let me know what you think because it was a bit over my head. But I at least wanted to mention that it was considered in IOTA's design. Quantum computers are still a long way from being very accessible, and I was curious to see how they compared to conventional computers. I found this statement, which I think is a good way to end this discussion. Although people often assume that quantum computers must automatically be better than conventional ones, by no means is that certain. So far, just about the only thing we know for certain that a quantum computer could do better than normal ones is factorization. Finding two unknown prime numbers that when multiplied together give a third known number. In 1949, while working at Bell Laboratories, mathematician Peter Shore demonstrated an algorithm that a quantum computer could follow to find the prime factors of large numbers, which would speed up the problem enormously. Shore's algorithm really excited interest in quantum computing because virtually every modern computer and every secure online shopping and banking website whew, use public key encryption technology based on the virtual impossibility of finding prime factors quickly. It is, in other words, an intractable computing problem. If quantum computers could indeed factor large numbers quickly, today's online security could be rendered obsolete in a stroke. Wow, that is quite apocalyptic. <laughs> I would love for you all to give me some feedback, including information or resources you have found on this topic, or even if you believe quantum computing attacks will be relevant in 15 years or not. I know this is a very complex topic to talk about, and I hope you found my research on this useful and something that maybe can help you further research quantum computing and how it can affect cryptocurrencies in the future. Feel free to leave me a comment about today's video, whether you liked it or didn't like it. If there's a topic you want to see covered, please let me know that as well. Want to see more cryptocurrency topics? Please subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell for notifications on my latest episodes. 
If you'd like to leave a donation, see the description below for details. See you next time!